Feast of the Ascension on this actual Ascension Thursday is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. The former treaties I made, O Theophilus, of all things was Jesus began to do and to teach until the day on which giving commandments by the Holy Ghost to the apostles whom he had chosen, he was taken up, to whom also he allowed he showed himself alive after his passion by many proofs, for forty days appearing to them and speaking of the kingdom of God, and eating together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but should wait for the promise of the Father, which you have heard, saith he, by my mouth. For John indeed baptized with water, that you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, but not many days hence. They therefore who were come together asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? But he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or moments which the Father hath put into his own power, but you shall receive the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and in Samaria, and even to the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had said these things, while they looked on, he was raised up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they were beholding him going up into heaven, behold, two men stood by them in white garments, who also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand you looking up to heaven? This Jesus, who is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come as you have seen him going into heaven. And then the Gospel, we take that according to St. Mark, chapter 16. At that time Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were at table, and he upbraided them uh, with, with their incredulity and hardness of heart, because he did not believe in them who had, who had seen him after he was risen again. And he said to them, Go ye into the whole world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be condemned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, and they shall take up serpents, and if they shall drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands upon the sick, and they shall recover. And the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God. But they going preached everywhere, the Lord working with all, and confirming the word with the signs that followed. Those were the words of today's Holy Ghost. In consideration of this sacred day of the Ascension, taken part from the Bishop Jacobus de Ragine, back in the 1200s, discussing the meaning of the Holy Sacrifice and explanation of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. And that, that they, we have, he says, three times when the priest begins the canon, just a couple points related here to the Ascension of our Lord, that we have three times the priest enters the canon of the Mass, he bows over and kisses the cross, kisses the altar. And remembering that Christ came down from heaven to earth to die on the cross for our sins. And that there's going to be over the, over the oblations, a triple blessing, because Christ is sent to because the Father sent him to redeem the world. And secondly, he was sent to death by Judas, who betrayed him to the Jews. And then thirdly, he is sent to death by the, by, 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 by the way of treason. And then the third way he was sent to death was by the third blessing, by the third blessing of the, these, these offerings. What's going to happen to these offerings? They're going to be sacrificed. The first reason the sacrifice was God the Father sent Jesus Christ to the earth to redeem mankind. The second is that Judas, by an act of treason, betrayed Christ to the Jews. And then the third is that the Jews, by an act of detraction, handed Christ over to Pilate. And so there are three causes of the crucifixion. Three causes. And the first cause, it was God the Father deciding to redeem the human race. The second cause of the Jesus Christ crucifixion is the traitor of the Judas, who handed over by treason. And the third cause is that, that, that the, the, the people who accepted the treason 
They handed Jesus Christ over to the by way of detraction, so that the words destroy, treason destroys, and then God commanded Jesus Christ to come into a world in which there's going to be treason, and a world in which there's going to be detraction. Amongst his friends, he will find the treasonous. And amongst his own army, he's going to be handed over to the enemy to be destroyed by their wicked tongues. Then, of course, we come to the end of the Mass, and we have the Agnus Dei. And the Agnus Dei is said three times. Angus Dei, but those begotten Monday, miserere nobis. We are reminded that Jesus Christ, once again, he came down to this earth. For what? We might be forgiven, miserere nobis. And again, that we might be forgiven, miserere nobis. And a third time, dona nobis pacem, Lord, give us peace. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. The priest bows over because he recognizes this Lamb of God, who came down and died on the cross and, uh, on, in the crucifixion and is offered in the, in the, uh, in the Mass, that we are not worthy to receive him. But why did he come? Why did he become a lamb? To be hand him over to the treasonous and hand himself over by detraction to the enemies of God to be crucified. He did this that we might have be forgiven. And first was the will of the Father. That the Father made to God the Son become man so that he might be, may forgive us our sins. Misery nobis, have mercy on us. And then the second is that the, the, the will of the Son that we be forgiven but then also the third, it says that Christ has gone to prepare us a crown of glory. So the Lord Jesus Christ is going to forgive us our sins, misere nobis, and he is going to take away the treason of Judas by the fidelity of the followers of Christ, the fidelity of, of, of those that are faithful. Judas not only here standing for Judas the priest, but the Judas for every single Catholic who betrays Christ by their mortal sins, and by handing themselves over and their children over to the world. So that everybody in the member, every human being that exists, at one time they were all Catholic. At one time they were all members of the army of Christ. And at some point there was a traitor. Cain betrayed and murdered Abel. Ham betrayed and mocked Noah. And later on the, the, the sons of Ham and the sons of Japheth and the sons of Sim all betrayed, and they all began as traitor, traitors. And then they began, after they became traitors, they went to the next sin of detraction. And it's interesting about the sin of detraction being mentioned as one of the many, though that there are wicked words that are said about and that all manner of evil, our Lord Jesus Christ says, all manner of evil is going to be said about you, just like all manner of evil is said about me. And the servant is not greater than the master. And then Jacobus points out, hence there are three parts of Jesus Christ's coming. He came in obedience to his Father in order to conquer Satan. And he will conquer Satan's lies and Satan's treason. And then in order to take souls and save them. But then he goes back up into heaven. And hence we have the Agnus Dei. And he says, the Agnus Dei, we told his peccato Monday, miserere nobis. Miserere nobis, dona nobis pacem. And why dona nobis pacem? Because Christ is going to go up into heaven in order to crown his saints. And the saints will have to be crowned. And this place must be prepared. Our Lord Jesus Christ goes up into heaven and he prepares a place for his saints. He's going to go into heaven and he spends the 2,000 years. Our Lord said, eye is not, he eye is not seen, ear is not heard. God prepared it. And so there must be a third part of Jesus Christ coming. The first part he comes down. He, he dies on the cross for our sins. He forms his apostles. Then he dies on, and then he conquers death. But then he must go up into heaven and prepare a place for those who love him. And our Lord Jesus Christ also said towards the end of the, on Holy Thursday night, it is necessary for you that I go. I'm going to go up into heaven. You want me to stay forever physically upon this earth? We're standing around you. But it's necessary for you that I go. I am going to leave this earth. I'm going to go up into heaven. Necessary for you that I go. And the reason why it's necessary for you that I go is that it might prepare a place for you in heaven. Our Lord Jesus Christ is busy preparing a place. He's preparing a place for us to, to, to rest in heaven. And then Jacobus points out in the Requiem Mass, we say, Dona eis requiem, Dona eis requiem, Dona eis requiem sepiternam. For there are three rests. The first rest is that God wants to give to his beloved when we enter in this world, there are three, three things that take away our rest. And the first one is pain and suffering. 
And so therefore, the first Donatus Requiem is, Christ is going to remove all pain. Behold, the Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Es jan yu seikotoli begata mundi. Misere nobis, in the normal Mass. But then in the Requiem Mass, Behold, the Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Donatus Requiem, give to them rest. And the first rest is going to be the removal of all pain. And then there will be the second rest, which is the removal of all sin. And that, and that they're going to rest in the possession of God. So that sin blocks us from the possession of God. And therefore we're going to take away sin that the soul rests in God. And then thirdly, that there's going to be rest in glory. We're going to rest in glory, which means that God is going to prepare a, a, a crown of glory for those that rest inside of him. And hence on the third Donatus Requiem, the priest adds, Donatus Requiem Sempiternam. That there's going to be rest forever. And we're to remember that the rest is with God is an eternal rest. The rest that's in the world is not even a real rest when it comes, and it's also uh, coming to an end. But the rest with God is an eternal rest, and the ascension is very important and essential to us because Christ is busy. Christ is going to be in heaven to prepare a place for those that love him. And he is one that receives the saints when they come to judgment. So that when the judgment happens, our Lord Jesus Christ is the just judge. And when the judgment happens, those that come to him in the state of mortal sin, they will see his wrath. They will see his wrath. But there shall be the wiping away, but they shall see his wrath, and they shall see the face of his wrath, and in terror they shall flee and drop out into hell. But those that come in the state of grace, they shall see his justice and his mercy. And, and, and when they are fully purified at the kingdom of purgatory, some of them will have to go to purgatory. Others will go straight to heaven. But when they're purely, completely purified, they will see Christ again. And Christ is going to bring them into the kingdom of heaven. Like we know in the case of St. Martha, beautiful death of St. Martha. When Martha died, she, was, she told her, her, her uh, spiritual children that she was going to die. The daughters that she found in one of the earliest convents in the church that she was going to die. And on the day of Martha's death, our Lord Jesus Christ came to her. And he came wearing an apron. And he came to Martha and he said, Martha, when I was on this earth, you prepared your table for me. Behold, now my table is prepared. And I have prepared a table for you. And I bring you to that table. We know that in the end of our days, if we die with the love of God in our hearts, if we die in the state of sanctifying grace, and Christ with us, he will not send the angels to carry us into heaven. He himself is going to come as he came to St. Martha. And so the ascension is an important dogma of our holy church by which our Lord Jesus Christ goes into heaven. And he will see every man. Remember, he also said on Good Friday with the Holy Thursday night, he said he's going to prepare a place for his apostles. On Good Friday, he told Caiaphas, You, Caiaphas, you are going to see the Son of Man coming in power and majesty. So that every human being that exists from the moment of conception until the ending of life, every baby that's conceived and everyone that died at the age of 900, like Methuselah, every single one, every single human being is going to meet personally Jesus Christ. He is going to meet personally God. God is everywhere. He is everywhere, of course, in that he, he is in every single atom and molecule, but he is most especially everywhere inside of man. And so when every human being goes to eternity, they meet Jesus Christ personally. And when they are the enemies of God, they meet his wrath. But those that are his friends shall meet him in several ways. Those who are his enemies meet once his wrath, and in the breath of fire, the Lord's sacred scripture tells us that the, the breath of the Lord is a torrent of fire breathing upon the damned, and they shall go down into hell. And this resurrection is spoken of in the book of wisdom, where it says, all men shall rise, all men shall rise, some unto uh, judgment, or some unto judgment, unto, um, unto, unto, unto judgment, meaning unto peace, but others unto reproach. To see it, to see it always. So that these wicked individuals right now that are bringing about the death of millions and bringing about the enslaving of the world and the wickedness brought about by this fake coronavirus and by this massive crisis of uniting all the worlds of one world government under evil 
in order to prepare the reign of the Antichrist, every one of those wicked souls responsible for that shall rise unto reproach unless they repent, and they shall see it always. They shall meet Jesus Christ face to face, and they shall see his wrath. But all those that have been innocent, and all those that know and love him, and say, remember as true living members of his holy Catholic Church, grace, every one of those are going to meet Christ twice. One to the judgment, and then actually three times. One to the particular judgment, and then they'll be gathered into heaven by Christ. And then one to the general judgment, and then they'll be brought into heaven by Christ. And then they shall be crowned by Christ. And hence, also says Jacobus, there are five wounds. There are five wounds. The wounds in the hate, the wounds in the hand, and the wounds in the side. And our Lord Jesus Christ is used as the five gates by which we enter into heaven. And each one of these five gates, we meet Jesus Christ. So that when the soul that is just meets Christ, his sins are taken away by the confession and by the absolution and by the baptism. And the priest there absolves sins. Who is there? Christ is there to absolve the sins. And then when the time of judgment comes, Christ judges. And he says that our sins have been taken away. And then we must spend some time in purgatory if we're not yet perfect. And then Christ comes again. And even if we are already perfect like the saints, from judgment... They will pass out of the trial of the judgment, as all the saints did, and then travel with Christ. He shall bring them into the kingdom of heaven. And then there should be a, that there will be a final rest. The first rest, Donaeus Requiem, is the rest of removal of all pain. The second rest is the rest of the soul, by which it rests in God. And the third rest is the crowning of the soul and the body. And this is the eternal rest. Because before the end of the world, the body does not yet join in the, in the glory of the soul. But at the end of the world, all of the just souls are going to be united to, the, to their bodies in the valley of Josephat. And Jesus Christ shall bring them into the kingdom of heaven. And so say in the Mass also, Caribsumet, Cumipsumet, and Ipso, that with him, in him, and through him, are all things are with him, in him, and through him. And the ascension is an essential part of the life of Jesus Christ, an essential part of our salvation. And our Lord Jesus Christ is going up into heaven. In heaven he's busy, and he is preparing the place for those that love him. And he is now preparing the place. And there's a lot of detail, and a lot of work, and a lot of love that goes to the preparation of this place. Because Christ speaks about this place. They asked him, Lord, where art thou going? And he said, come and see. But they never fully see. But it must be a most wonderful place, and they're going to follow him. And now he is going to prepare that place that we will properly and truly see when we see God face to face. And hence, it's a most important day. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the top of the mountain, of, 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 of ascended into heaven in the sight of his apostles, and the sight of his disciples, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and so many thousands of others, that he ascended up into heaven. And the men of Galilee then spoke. The two angels came out and said, You men of Galilee, why are you looking up to heaven? Go, he will come back as he who saw him go to heaven. So he's going to come back. Now go out and carry Christ to the world. And we will know that Jesus Christ is with us until the end of the world by the signs that follow. There shall be the signs that follow. That is, that those who are in suffering, those who are in sin, those who are abandoned in this world, they are going to find a solution, an answer to their suffering, a removal of their sins, and a place of rest, which is found only in the Holy Roman Catholic faith. And there are going to be miraculous signs that prove the truth of our faith throughout all ages, including our own age, until the very ending of the world. In any case, we'll close it at that. And then God bless you all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost.